Harder, better, faster, stronger. Now, not, not, not just the words of a famous Daft Punk song, but actually also the philosophy of Porsche's design team when it came to building this, the next version of the Taycan. Their words were actually higher, faster, further, but close enough. After selling 150,000 units, they're back with a car that is apparently superior in every way, delivering more power, more standard equipment, better efficiency, and bigger batteries. In fact, in the case of this new Taycan rear-wheel drive, they say it will deliver a monster range of 510 miles. That sounds like a typo. Hang on a second. Yeah, no, they're claiming 510 miles in city driving anyway on a mixture of roads apparently this thing will do 421 miles which is kind of crazy because the previous version did what 260 hmm sounds almost too good to be true doesn't it and we will investigate those range claims in just a moment but Quick public service announcement, if you want a brand new electric car of your own, Auto Trader can help you lease one. Check out our website via the link down below. We've got some incredible in-stock deals right now, ready to go. Now, in terms of looks, I don't know if you remember, but the previous car had what looked like tears running down its face. Those are now gone. And what we get is a car that looks slightly less interesting, if you ask me. It kind of reminds me of a Tesla Model 3, and that's not necessarily a compliment. The lights are now completely flat instead of being indented slightly, but they are still interesting in the sense that the previous generation headlights had 84 individual pixels. This one has 32,000. That's not a typo. That's not always necessarily a good thing though, because as you might have heard in the news, there are people out there, criminals, shall we say, who have taken to stealing Taycan headlights to uh, grow their illicit crops, if you know what I'm talking about. Apparently, these are super bright, but also very, very efficient. They don't let out a lot of heat, and that's ideal for urban farmers. However, it's also ideal for drivers. Apparently, these can cast a beam up to 600 meters into the distance, lighting up everything in front of you, or it can narrow everything down to light up only your specific lane in order not to blind people at the side of the road. Very, very clever. Around the side, you get a nice little premium touch. It was available on the higher end versions, the 4S and the Turbo, but now it's also on the rear wheel drive. Motorized charge ports on both sides of the car, which makes it look that little bit more fancy, I think. The car now comes with air suspension as standard instead of the steel suspension you got on the entry level car. And also you can specify it with these aerodynamically optimized wheels, which apparently add 40 kilometers of range, regardless of whether you go for the 19s, the 20s or the 21s. These, if you're wondering, are the 20s. Around the back, not much has changed really. It just kind of looks like a standard Taycan, unless you look very, very closely on some versions where you will get this Porsche logo illuminated and also a light bar that can animate. Unfortunately, it's not fitted to this particular vehicle, so I'm gonna to have to cut to some B-roll now to show you what that looks like. Quite fancy, innit? Inside, it hasn't really changed much. You get a new animal-free interior option, as fitted here, a new drive mode switch on the steering wheel as standard, as well as a new cruise control lever on the left. The driver's screen has been updated and now shows how fast the car will charge at any given battery level. And you can now watch videos on the central display as well as on the passenger screen. That aside, it's business as usual. Okay, I think it's only right we go for a drive. And I know what you're thinking, it's a very powerful, sporty electric car, so it's only right we do launch control, huh? No, I'm not doing it. I'm not childish. I'm not that sort of person. Fine. Oh, yes! Look, I can't handle all this peer pressure, okay? I'm sick, I need help. All versions of the Taycan are now powerful and quicker than ever. It now uses an updated electric motor, helping deliver more power. In the case of the rear-wheel drive, 435 PS, an increase of 27. And torque has been bumped up by 75 Newton meters to 435. And it does feel better, harder, faster, stronger, 
the previous version of the Taycan rear wheel drive did 0 to 62 in 5.4 seconds. This one, 4.8. Proper sports car territory. And it comes with a new noise. Listen to that, Porsche sports sound. And what's clever is that all versions of the Taycan, so rear wheel drive, 4S, turbo and turbo S, all have their own unique noise. I'm not sure whether it's strictly necessary, but it does sound quite cool. According to Porsche, they spent nearly half of this car's development budget on improving the performance and the efficiency, which sounds quite noble. And if you have a positive outlook on life, then you might think that that's quite a good thing. But it's worth remembering that there are cheaper rivals out there that offer substantially faster cars. I'm talking about the likes of the MG4 X Power and the Kia EV6 GT. Those cars would leave the previous version of the Taycan rear wheel drive for dead. In fact, they'd probably still leave this version for dead. But the increase in power and torque makes it feel slightly less like you're being shortchanged. What's interesting is that the best selling version of the Taycan up to now has been the 4S, mainly because it has extra power. But with that extra torque and power you now get from the rear wheel drive version, and with it being the cheapest one, this might actually be the one to go for. One of the things I'm really pleased with on this car are the brakes, which feel nice and strong. That's not always the case with electric car brakes, mainly because they've got a mix, a blend of physical braking and energy recuperation from the motor. But this feels nice and consistent pretty much all the time. And also, they've changed the recuperation strategy. So on the previous car, the maximum regen you could get was 290 watts. This is boosted to 400 watts when you're recouping at high speeds. And what that means is you're now feeding a lot more energy back into the battery pack whenever you brake. On the subject of steering, it does feel like a real Porsche, nice and direct, loads of feel through the steering wheel as well. You can tell exactly what's happening with the grip at the front. You've got loads of power pushing you out of the corners. It has all the feel and fun of a rear wheel drive sports car, despite the fact that it's using an electric powertrain. In fact, although it's not as fast as the 4S or turbo versions, it's probably more fun. The acceleration is brisk rather than being terrifying, and corners can be enjoyed rather than you simply hanging on and hoping for the best, unlike in some cheaper EVs. I bet your MG4 can't do that. Suspension is a big topic in the new Taycan. The previous car came with steel suspension as standard with the option of adaptive air, but now adaptive air comes as standard. What it means is the car just feels a lot more comfortable than it did straight out the box. It's got this new fancy two valve setup, which a lot of manufacturers are using these days, which gives you better control of compression and rebound. In other words, when you go into a speed bump or pothole, as well as when you come out of one. You also get the option of Porsche Active Ride, not fitted to this car, which automatically raises the car upward to allow easy entry and does a much better job of riding speed bumps. And it keeps the car flat all the time. No pitching when you're accelerating, no diving when you're braking, and no leaning in the corners. As before, there are two battery options, big and small, and both are bigger than they were previously. The standard battery was 79 kilowatt hours and is now 89. The bigger performance battery plus now measures 105 kilowatt hours, an increase from 93. And interestingly, that size increase doesn't come at the expense of weight. In fact, the battery is nine kilograms lighter. I mentioned earlier that the Taycan rear wheel drive can achieve up to 510 miles of range in the city. I've got to make it clear, that's not according to Porsche, that is according to the WLTP, the same body that's responsible for calculating everybody's electric car range, as well as petrol car economy and CO2 emissions. They say this car will get a much more realistic range of 421 miles on a mixture of roads, but again, that seems quite ambitious. I've worked out that to get the 510 miles, you'd need to average 5.5 miles per kilowatt hour, or to get the 421, around five miles per kilowatt hour, which let's face it, isn't very realistic. 
in my hands, efficiency was still good. The car indicates around 300 miles on a single charge, but on Spanish motorways, locked in at between 70 and 80 miles per hour, it reported around 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour, which works out to be a motorway range of 336 miles. Drive slower and 400 miles of motorway range, albeit in summer temperatures, seems entirely realistic. And then there's charging, which is supposed to be very quick now, 320 kilowatts. So I had to try it out. So 320 kilowatts is very, very fast. I think Tesla can go as fast as 250 kilowatts. Lucid are claiming 300 kilowatts. So this could be a bit of a world record if Porsche's claims are correct. I've come to an Ionity charger at this very glamorous service station where we're gonna put it to the test. Now, one of the things to note is that this is plug and play. So I should just be able to plug it in and the car will accept the charge without me faffing around with any credit cards or RFID cards, for example. And one thing to note as well is that the car will actually start accepting current a lot quicker than before. The previous car took around a minute, a minute and a half before it started charging. This should start charging within about 30 seconds. We're gonna keep an eye on the charge speed and see what happens. It should start reasonably slowly and then ramp up over time. Let's go check it out. Okay, it says connection okay. Inicio. Uh, I might change from Espanol to English. Mobility contract. Plug and play. <laughs> Why does this always happen with electric cars? You go there expecting it to be seamless and then this happens. Please check with your mobility service. Have I got to check the car? Maybe I've got to check the car. No, the car's fine. They told me it was plug and play. They literally said, plug it in, Rory. It will start charging in 30 seconds. It's not happening, is it? <laughs> Bear with me, I'll be back in a minute. Make a call. Apparently, I did have to check the car. The plug and charge feature was inadvertently switched off, not by me, so that needed correcting. But by the time I'd got that sorted, the Ionity charge station stopped playing ball. What is going on? Ultimately, I had to swap to another charger, but once I did that, things became a lot more straightforward, and the Taycan was sucking down electrons at a rate I'd never seen before. Things began slower than expected, but as the voltage increased, the numbers began to climb rapidly. So we've just seen, after a lot of patience, the car hit a maximum peak charging rate of 318 kilowatts. Two kilowatts shy of what Porsche say, but still incredibly fast. As far as I'm concerned, that's a world record. I've never seen an electric car charge that quickly. And what's really impressive is that the battery is now at over half and it's still charging at well over 300 kilowatts. One of the main ways they've enabled this ability to rapid charge at such high rates over such a long period is by a change in the cell chemistry. They've changed the ratio of nickel, manganese, and cobalt from 622 to 811. One of the great benefits of doing that is that the car can now rapid charge across a wider spectrum of temperatures. So the previous car could only rapid charge when it got to around 15 degrees Celsius. With this one, the window of rapid charging is now across 15 degrees up to 40 degrees Celsius. So we can maintain these really impressive charge speeds for a much longer time. Ultimately, whereas the previous car could go from 10 to 80% in around 37 minutes, this new Taycan can go from 10 to 80% in only 18 minutes. And that, that's brilliant. <laughs> So what does all of this cost you? The entry-level Taycan will set you back £86,500. Not cheap, but Porsche says it's better value and has more standard equipment, including the larger batteries, adaptive air suspension, parking assist with reverse camera, folding side mirrors, electric charge flaps on both sides, heated seats, ambient lighting, intelligent range manager, the drive mode switch, and more. So what's my verdict on the new Porsche Taycan rear-wheel drive? Well, I've always loved this particular version of the Taycan. The only problem with it was the lack of grunt. It was a bit underpowered and not necessarily quick enough for an electric Porsche in my eyes. But the company have fixed that. They've made it 
faster, better, harder, stronger. And it is now as much fun as it was always supposed to be. It can't necessarily keep up with all these young up and comers in a straight line, but it is delectable to drive. So much fun in the corners, super engaging, and it just puts a smile on your face. Would I buy one? Well, I am slightly put off by the looks, which I think are now unnecessarily generic, if you ask me. But if you can put that to one side, the new Taycan, specifically this entry-level rear-wheel drive version, is a fantastic car. Go check it out.